Hi, what a beautiful day. Happy Sunday to everybody that is looking at this or whenever you get a chance to actually look at the videos. Um, one thing that I would like to see people do is be less on the computers and be co-creating more. Well, what I want to talk today is about your life sentence. Uh, you're a co-creator. You should be doing something that you're passionate about. Even if it's part-time, so you could earn enough money to do it full-time. In school, we're taught in kindergarten, usually in the kindergarten classes, they have career day. And they teach, have people come in, which is fabulous because so many parents volunteer. And they come in and they talk about their careers. And what's happening there, however, is that at an early age, a child is being imprinted as to, oh, that was kind of neat, maybe I should become a doctor. Oh, that was kind of neat, maybe I should become a nurse. Oh, that's kind of neat, maybe I should become a teacher. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, better would be for a class to be brought together and ask children, put different things in, uh, in front of them and ask them to create something or watch them, observe to see what they're really good at, all right? Like, my son loves computers. He enjoys what he's doing. Um, basically, he tells me he's like playing. And at least saw that basically he loved the computer, so we capitalized on that. Capitalize on whatever your child is good at. Because then they don't have to wake up in the morning feeling begrudged, oh, I'd have to do that. The other part of that equation is that they're copying somebody else. And I've done that in my lifetime. I've copied other people. I maybe saw someone teaching something and I said, oh, I would like to do that. Even though as a child, I always wanted to be a special ed teacher and I did that. But regardless, I picked the class um, that was kindergarten because I saw another classroom that was kindergarten. What, I, what I'm trying to say, I wasn't picking something that I co-created. I could have picked maybe fifth grade. I could have picked middle school, even though I know that I always wanted to work with the, the um, uh, disabled population. But again, I copied. Um, even when I had my center, again, I copied. Um, not copied necessarily what I was teaching, but copied the, um, because I healed with the raw foods and I took a class. And so I was so excited that I ended up pretty well doing what someone else was doing. But then I, I did Reiki, which actually was something I got attracted to. And that's where my journey really started. I got attracted to that when I shifted to awareness and realized that we end up copying so many things and we forget about us being original, about our authentic self. So if, if and whenever I end up doing maybe another lecture or even here talking to all of you, I, I'm not copying anybody. I'm speaking my truth. I'm speaking my passion. I'm speaking me in my heart straight to you i'm not being someone else is it bad to be to to do that well you make a living out off of it yeah you make money and you buy your cars and whatever it is that you need to get and you support your family but when it's all said and done have you really celebrated your life all the way through because you have something you're passionate about and remember i started this by saying it's a life sentence and that leads me into the other Thing that I want to talk about about a life sentence and that's credit there's another area where everybody copies credit cards credit cards folks don't take vacations I've been there I've done that and unless it's a house or a car that you need to purchase because that's a bigger ticket item I'm telling you please save the money and pay for it and always always and whenever you're gonna purchase something ask yourself do I really need this 
And I've done that over and over. And you know what happens? Divinity knows what you really need and what you don't. And you get rewarded because so many things that I ask that question, I, I may pick it up and put it back down. I end up getting it as a present. Not that I'm expecting anything like that, but it comes into my environment because I am doing what I love. I'm helping people to eat healthy, to get into their hearts. And the biggest one that you could do that in order to stay there and your head not chatter about, oh, where's the next dollar coming from because I gotta pay all these credit cards off. Especially for the young um, adults that are out here, they are listening. Please, save money and pay for whatever you need. Do not get into the credit scene. I've done it and let me tell you, I did it to open my center and I am authentic. I say everything, I say all my truth. I did it to open my center and it was such a mess because one of the credit cards, they looked at my credit history and they said, oh my goodness, you have a high outstanding um, credit card bill. And I said, yes, I opened a nonprofit place to help people. And that particular, and I'll be professional, I won't say which credit card it is because they're all the same anyways. They took me from a 12% interest to 33% interest. Make a long story short, they basically drowned me because once they did it, the rest of them did it. That's one of the reasons my center is no longer open. That's one. Second, I mean, there's many other reasons as well. I had such a big heart. I didn't, I kind of gave the whole place away. I used to get big discounts and I did many people free. And, I, and that was a hard lesson for me to learn that whenever you're doing the lights work, we function on money here. There has to be some sort of an exchange. So that was a big lesson. Everything is a lesson. Everything is a classroom. It's, this is a classroom and it's a lesson within the classroom. So what I'm telling you is very important because nowadays, a couple of years ago, I think it's been two years ago, they're starting to send out what is the 1099, the IRS. And they are starting to forgive some of these loans that people could not afford because they got, the credit cards went up too high. Um, unfortunately, when the government decided to um, tell them to tell you when the interest rate goes up, well, they knew what was coming down the line, so they raised everybody's interest. So a lot of people got burnt on that. And so the way for the government to get paid and for people to write it off of the income tax, these credit card holders, was to put it into your income tax. So you get a 1099, and I'm gonna just give you a scenario. Let's say it's $10,000. They, they turned it into the IRS, the creditors. Then you it, get, it gets put into your uh, income tax as salary. So now you get taxed on the $10,000. But here's the kicker. The credit card holders, it doesn't matter about the state, the, the state's limitation on it. I think Florida, don't quote me, I think it's four years, I'm not sure. They cannot, they could still come after you over and over and over, they can't put a judgment after that's done. It's called a time bar. But they could still harass you and they're not supposed to be harassing you, but they still could come after you. And again, it's a life sentence. Legally, even though they put it in the uh, income tax, Legally, they sell that off to a collection agency and the collection agency could come after you forever, forever, for the same amount that they put in, okay? So what's the way around that? Just don't get started into it. My self, I got a debit card and that's it. If I can't pay for it, I don't own it. I don't have it. That's the best way because, again, the credit cards, will they do not take vacations. They're there to make money, a lot of it. And I saw a special.